I'm Tini. Welcome back to my channel. I got some very exciting book mail today so I thought it would be fun just to do an unboxing haul kind of video. Um, just quick and fun. Uh, so this is my March box from a box of stories. They are a like mystery book subscription box based here in the UK. Um, I feel like with my 17 subscribers I don't really need to clarify that this is something that I pay for with my own money but just in case this is something I pay for with my own money. <laughs> um, I first heard about a box of stories when Emma from Drinking By My Shelf did a sponsored video with them in January and that day, like the same day, like 10 minutes after I finished watching the video, I like immediately went onto the website, used Emma's code and ordered my first box um, because I have been looking to sign up to a book subscription box for ages. I'm, I've been so desperate to sign up to one because I think they're so fun but it was just a case of finding one that a is actually available in the UK and then it was also a case of finding one that I felt personally was good value for money because book subscription boxes tend to be between 15 and 25 pounds somewhere in that kind of range and I personally don't very often buy books full price I just don't earn a lot of money and can't afford to be buying books brand new all the time so I'm quite careful with money around books so signing up to a subscription box had to be value for money and with a box of stories you get four books per box I think it's £14.99 if you just buy one box like a one-off and then if you subscribe it's like £13.50 and I used as I say Emma's code for my first box so I got my first box for like under a tenner. I also really like the premise of a box of stories as well so like I said it is a mystery subscription box um, so you don't know what books you're getting you just get four books in the post and you don't know what they are um, but the whole thing is that they are books that they have rescued so they're books that were going to be pulped and destroyed so I, I don't really know when a book goes to be pulped I don't work in publishing but I imagine it's something like if a Waterstones have a hundred copies of a book and they decide that they don't want to stock it anymore and they just send it off to be pulped I don't know if that's true that could be completely wrong um, but I know that loads and loads of books go to be pulped like unnecessarily there's nothing wrong with them they're brand new and that's what books of stories do they rescue them and they send them out to people who subscribe this is my second box ever so like I said I got my first one in January for like nine pounds and then this is my second like round you decide how often you want them I think you can do it from every single month to up to every four months I think so like every quarter I signed up for every other month so like I said I got my first box in January and this one has come in March I get the general fiction box they do do some more specific boxes like I think there's a thriller box and a YA box or it might be a crime box and a YA box um, and there are some other ones as well but I can't remember what they are but I just get the general fiction one because like kind of the whole point of getting a mystery box for me is to broaden my horizons as much as possible and then also they do this really good thing where you can link your box of stories account to your goodreads and they will try their best to look at books you've given five stars and give you similar books and they also make sure that they don't give you any books that you already have on your red pile so that they're never giving you books you already own or have already read which I think is really cool but yeah that's why I subscribe to this box and that's why I think it's really good I loved the books that I got in my first box I've read two of them all the way through and I think I gave one of them four stars and one of them five stars so that's great I'm also halfway through another one of them now and I've got like one left to read but they all seemed really fun they were all books and authors that I'd never heard of before which is also kind of the point of this so it's really cool um 
So without further ado, let's open the box, shall we? I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Surprise books. What's better than that? I have like an actual box cutter somewhere and I don't know why I'm not using it. I'm just using like the worst scissors in the house. I can't even see what's in here. You you are seeing this before me even. But here's like their kind of manifesto thing printed on the inside of the box. So as not to waste packaging, which we love. So it says 77 million books are destroyed in the UK every year. 83% of those books are pulped before they have even been read. We want to save these amazing books from being lost in time forever. Every box you get saves four amazing books and you discover four incredible authors. So yeah, that's like their manifesto thing. Woo! I'm so excited, I'm so excited. Ah. Which ones? Let's just go from the top, I guess. This one. What a cover. I love that. Your House Will Pay by Steph Cha or Cha? I don't know. Ooh, Ian Rankin has uh, Blurbed it, saying fresh, thoughtful, and thrilling. Um, so I'm guessing it's a thriller, um, if Ian Ranking is blurbing it. Um, a touching portrait of two families bound by a split second decision. It's, look at that cover though. Sorry, getting too excited about the cover. What does it say? Grace Park and Sean Matthews share a city, Los Angeles, but seemingly little else, coming from different generations and very different communities. As Grace battles with confusion over her elder sister's engagement from her Korean immigrant parents, Sean tries to help his cousin Ray readjust to civilian life after years spent in prison. But what is in their past that links these two families as the city around them threatens to erupt into violence, echoing the worst days of the early 1990s, the lives of Grace and Sean are set to collide in ways that will change them all forever. Beautifully written and marked by its aching humanity, as much as its growing sense of dread, your house will pay is a powerful and urgent novel for today. That sounds so good. I've never heard of this. That's why it's so good. I've never heard of this. I've never heard of this author, but that sounds really exciting. The next one is The Better Sister. So actually reading the blurb and looking at this cover, this looks like it might be a little bit more of a literary fiction literary thriller kind of thing but this one very much screams thriller to me from the cover which i love i love a good thriller so the better sister by alf alifair berg keep your enemies close and your sister closer Ooh, interesting for a while it seemed like both taylor sisters had found happiness chloe landed a publishing job in new york city nikki married adam and became a mother to their son, Ethan. But now, 14 years later, it is Chloe who is married to Adam and raising Ethan. When Adam is murdered at the couple's beach house, Chloe has no choice but to welcome her estranged sister back into her life and, and confront the truth behind family secrets they both try to leave behind. Wow. I mean, I don't even care about the murder. I wanna know what happened with the marriage. Wow. That sounds fun. Um, next one. This looks interesting. So purely based on the covers and the blurbs alone, this is something I would pick up in a bookshop, like 100%. Like the cover would catch my eye, I'd read the blurb and I'd pick that up. This is something that I'd maybe pick up in like a charity shop or secondhand in some way. Like it sounds like a fun thriller. Um, but I don't know if I'd necessarily like immediately pick it up, but it sounds really fun. And that's the thing that I really like about this box is that you get books that you would never ordinarily kind of pick up and you might find that you absolutely love them. This, I don't even think would catch my eye. Like, um, it looks like it might be some kind of historical fiction though. Um, but like from this cover, I'd ignore this in a bookshop and it's not that I don't like the cover it just doesn't look from the cover like the kind of book I would pick up but let's have a look at the book it's called The Fourth Shore 1929 yes it is a historical fiction good marketing um, I do actually really like historical fiction so I don't know why the cover is 
like something that I wouldn't pick up. If the cover screams historical fiction and I really like historical fiction, I don't know why I wouldn't pick it up. But um, 1929, Tripoli. Where's Tripoli? Oh, it's the capital of Libya. Interesting. Set in Libya. I don't think I've ever read a book set in Libya. I wonder if the author is from Libya. Oh, she's from Exeter. Liliana is sure she is on the brink of a great adventure, but what awaits her is not the Mediterranean ideal of cocktail parties, dashing offices and romantic intrigues she imagined. Instead, she finds a world of persecution, repression, corruption and deceptions both great and small. Blown away by the winds of fascism and Catholicism, Liliana becomes enmeshed in a dark liaison which has terrible consequences both for her and those she loves most. The fourth shore is engrossing and intensely poignant story of Liliana's journey from Rome to Tripoli to a North London suburb where she begins to uncover a secret she has buried so deeply that even she is far from certain what it is. That sounds really intriguing. Um, again, I'm not sure if I'd pick this up in a bookshop. I tend to read, I think I just said that I love historical fiction, but I think I do tend to read more like World War historical fiction. This is 1929, so what's that? Like, that's like in the middle of the two wars, isn't it? Um, but it does sound interesting. It sounds kind of like a historical thriller type thing interesting we'll see when i get round to that oh oh that is definitely not a book i would pick up from the cover it's called mothers and daughters by minna howard alice garnett finds herself widowed in her early 40s leaving her with an empty house and a lonely heart her 20-something daughters laura and evie announce their separate and unexpected news which plows Alice straight out of grieving and into the prospect of planning a wedding and becoming a reluctant yet glamorous granny. When Frank, an old family friend, returns to give his godchild Laura away, a whole host of secrets unfold that rock the family's foundations. A wonderfully warm novel about family loss, hidden secrets and new beginnings. Interesting. It sounds interesting. Um, it does actually sound like something I'd enjoy. Um, from the cover I thought it was going to be and especially when it mentioned when Frank comes back I thought it was going to be a romance um, and romance is uh is not my thing um but it does sound interesting in order of interest it's probably actually the order in which I unbox them like this sounds fascinating and I'm going to try and get around to that as soon as possible like I'm predicting that this is going to be like a four star read this then sounds also very intriguing. I think that's going to be like really fun. This also fascinating. Um, I'm not sure if I'll pick it up like in April or like as soon as possible, but definitely intrigued by it. And then this one is probably the one I'm the least like, oh wow, I want to get to that. But I actually am really intrigued to see how much I'm going to enjoy it because I think it might surprise me. But yeah, that is kind of it really. These are the four books that I got from my March A Box of Stories box. Um, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have read any of these books, please let me know what you thought of them. I'd love to hear what any of you guys have to say about any of these books or if you've read these authors before, if you think I'm gonna like them, um, let me know. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in another video again soon.